Cabinet Secretary, two weeks ago, the former head of the NHS Counter Fraud Service warned that not enough was being done to tackle fraud in our NHS, and that as much as £200 million a year, or 3% of the budget, is being lost because of fraud. The scale is appalling when you consider that each year we lose the equivalent of two and a half times the total new treatment fund. What is your government doing to combat this fraud, uh, given the staggering amount of loss? Well, we start from a point of basic disagreement, because the research undertaken in Portsmouth uh, is not something that uh, we recognise, or indeed NHS England recognise, in terms of the scale of NHS fraud. And there are a number of suppositions within the research, so it just isn't a figure that we recognise. We do, though, take seriously challenges about uh, NHS fraud activity, uh, we have a counter-fraud unit that works across, uh, that works not only in Wales, it works with colleagues in England too. And part of what the research was talking about were things that you wouldn't necessarily consider to be uh, fraud. You think about the, uh, the commercial abuse of some relationships, which is part of what they were thinking about. And actually, we have a range, of, uh, a range of legal action together with other jurisdictions within the UK about, uh, about infringements of patents and about abusing market position. The Council General has to look at some of these issues as well about our position on legal action ongoing, but at present, of course, we're able to do that most effectively because we're able to make the best use of European Union regulations. That, of course, will become more difficult should we leave the European Union in due course. Thank you for that answer, Cabinet Secretary. I welcome the fact that there is zero tolerance to fraud within the NHS in Wales. Last month, two former employees of a GP surgery in Newport were convicted of fraudulently filling in filing prescriptions and ordered to pay back thousands of pounds to the NHS. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, what further steps can be taken to prevent this type of fraud which costs the NHS millions of pounds? Um, have you explored whether technology can offer a solution on prescription fraud? Uh, the answer to that is a simple yes. Uh, I've of course, we take a zero-tolerance approach to fraud, but actually better use of technology will help to minimise the risks for fraud. Uh, and in particular, we're looking at uh, e-prescribing, making it easier to prescribe, actually saving people's time and actually being able to track effectively what's being done uh, by healthcare professionals at various points within the system. And our ability to do that it does depend on, uh, on our continued investment in not just uh, the healthcare records, but actually the ability for healthcare professionals to access that record and be tracked in doing so. That was part of the barrier that prevented uh, our earlier access to Choose Pharmacy. When I chose to invest in Choose Pharmacy, we'd reach a position where both the BMA and, and community pharmacy themselves agreed on the investment, and they agreed on a method in which the healthcare professional could be tracked on entering the GP record itself as well. So actually it's improved our ability to audit, and that should help us in our uh, attempts to counter fraud within the NHS. I'm pleased to hear that, Cabinet Secretary. I have in the past raised the issue of EHIC card fraud, and at the time you said you didn't believe it affected our NHS. However, journalists working for national newspapers revealed how easy it was to obtain a card in someone else's name. Cards were obtained in the name of Theresa May, Jeremy Hunt and Donald Trump. According to a whistleblower at the NHS Business Services Authority in England, as many as one in five applications are fraudulent. As the card is often all that is needed to obtain treatment, it is believed that this fraud has cost the NHS hundreds of millions of pounds. Cabinet Secretary, how can we be sure that this type of fraud is not affecting our NHS in Wales? That's an utterly speculative accusation to make that there are hundreds of millions of pounds being siphoned off by an unnamed national newspaper looking at, uh, looking at a wholly anecdotal exercise. Uh, and if we want to get stirred and stoked up into this, we can, we can all follow where this leads. Uh, I am not at all interested in diverting attention away from the NHS doing its job to properly service the needs of the public, and yes, to properly think about dealing with fraud where it exists, but I'm not going to be led by the nose by a right-wing campaign that is all about our relationship with Europe. Our NHS relies on its relationship with Europe, uh, with Europe not just for staff, but the way we share, we share knowledge, the way we share regulation, medical devices, and our exit from the European Union on the terms that are potentially available at present with the case in the UK government would do great and lasting damage to our National Health Service. That is the biggest barrier, the biggest challenge to our National Health Service and our continued relationship with Europe. <laughs> 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 <